Hello everyone, this is your unemployed chef coming to you live from my bunker again. I hope everyone's doing okay in this quarantine or not. Um, if you're not being quarantined, uh, please go back into the house. Um, we don't want you to uh, become an infected and possibly a zombie. Um, so just to get to the point, for tonight's video, I'll be making some broccoli and some mahi-mahi. Um, for my mahi-mahi, I'll be putting on some Frank's Red Hot Honey Garlic Sauce, which is really good. I'll be seasoning my mahi-mahi uh, with some lemon pepper. I'll be cooking it in some extra virgin garlic olive oil. And of course, you can't forget your trusty blood pressure some black pepper, and some red uh, chili pepper flakes. As far as my broccoli, I'll be seasoning it with some butter and the juice of half a lemon. So let's get started. So first thing I wanted to do, I am going to start making the broccoli since the broccoli takes longer to cook than the fish. Now we'll start by steaming the broccoli. It is partially still frozen, partially defrosted. So we'll see. I'm gonna use some bougie water because I'm just really lazy and trying to get some tap water. Um, sorry guys. Just a little bit of water, not too much because broccoli makes a lot of water. You're probably wondering, wow, your camera looks really good this time. I was playing around on my phone and I was unaware that my phone has 60 frames per second. Um, and I'm really glad I found that feature, but it looks awesome. There's no lag, everything's clear, just how a high caliber video should be made. I'm going to start steaming it at 7. I'm sorry for everyone that has real stoves and real ovens. Um, I just have to work with this electric oven. Now I'm going to put the lid on and give it some time to steam. I'm not going to put any seasoning right on just yet. I noticed if I put the seasoning on too early, it would actually cause um, cause the flavor to become diluted and I don't want that. I actually just want to steam the broccoli, actually cook the broccoli, drew some more, and then put the seasoning on. Okay, so the broccoli is steaming now and I'm going to actually take off the lid so I can evaporate a lot of the water out. And I'm going to turn it down to about four. I don't want to overcook it. I don't want to cook it too fast. All right. And now I'm going to check to see if the broccoli is tender. Okay, it is getting tender somewhat. I'm going to stir it around. And now since all the water, or most of the water evaporated, now I can start seasoning it. That's the fun part. As promised, I'll put some butter in it. So this, I believe, is about, I want to say one pound of broccoli. So now I'm putting in, I'm going to use about two tablespoons of butter. Zoom in camera. 
You can do it, camera. It's not zooming in. Camera is confused. Right? And... Stir it around. Some people like their broccoli cooked until it's brown. I personally don't. Um, it's not visually appealing. I know that's a really bougie excuse. Um, it, but really... I think broccoli tastes better and it's actually better when it still has most of its green still there. Okay, added some butter. I'm going to turn it down again to about two and a half. I wish electric ovens had easy to understand heat levels. That would make things so much easier. And I think I'm going to add a touch of olive oil. I don't want my broccoli dry. Oh, I'll count four seconds. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now it's time to, as that's cooking, I'm going to heat up my frying pan so it can get ready for the mahi-mahi. I want to put this on a setting of three, not too hot and not too low. And coat the pan with some olive oil. So this is about, I would say, one tablespoon of olive oil. Now I can get my half a lemon and squeeze some juice in there. I'm getting the seeds out, but not the juice. Come on, juice. This is very uneventful. I got some juice out. And just going to get the seeds out. You stir it around and let's not forget the blood pressure. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil, just a touch. Mm. 
you just want to add a kiss of olive oil not a makeout session that would be a completely different cooking show well we're keeping it PG for the most part right here I have one defrosted filet of mahi mahi um, you don't have to get frozen but um, I get a really good deal on I believe I get maybe three pounds of mahi mahi so it's very economical and it's a great protein to have around the house now I'm going to start by cutting it Okay, and move the oil around. And one good tip is try cleaning as you go. It makes things easier to clean up and leaves less of a mess. I think I just repeated myself. Right. And now for the lemon pepper. It doesn't matter which brand of lemon pepper that you use. Just make sure when it comes to seasoning, make sure that it doesn't have a high salt content. If it does have a high salt content, that means that you don't have to put a lot of salt in your food. Um, if it doesn't have a high salt content, do the opposite of what I just said. As you can see, it started cooking already. And check the broccoli. Now it's time for me to take it off so it doesn't overcook. blood pressure just a little bit more come out I don't know if it's like the chemistry of sea salt, but sometimes it's really hard to come out and I'm like, dang, it's not the 1950s. It's okay to come out now. I told you the show is PG sometimes, not all the time. Don't at me. Now I'm going to actually turn up the heat on the mahi mahi. I'm going to turn it up to five, I believe, in gas oven stove language. That's, I would say, a simmer, a high, or I would say a medium simmer. 
What I also like to do when I cook my fish is to put a lid on it to keep keep it moist as it cooks fully cooks through fully. And if I wish to get it a little bit more crispy, um, I'll take the lid off and um, crisp it. Lids tend to keep the heat in and moisture in, whereas keeping the lid off causes things to be a lot less crispy. It just depends on your preference. I'm also going to cook, as you can see, parts of the fish are turning white. And if you've ever cooked salmon before, just zooming in. Um, you could actually see that there are some bubbles on the fish. Once you see those, that means that um, a lot of the fat is rendering out of the fish. And that it's actually c close to being done. Fish does not take a long time to be done. I'm going to leave this on for about... Um, it's been on for about five minutes now at a medium simmer. I'm going to leave it on for about another three minutes. I'll put the timer on for three. That's my evidence. And start. Okay, my three minutes is up. I'm turning the heat down. And as you can see, compared to the last time you've seen a fish, it is not pink in the center. That is white, so we know that the flesh is cooked all the way through. And I'm going to flip it. And add some more seasoning. just rubbed off a little bit All right, and now we're done. So we have some beautiful and tender mahi-mahi. But wait, we have to check to make sure that it flakes. Just like your high school friends after you graduated from high school. So what you want to do to make sure any type of fish is cooked is to make sure that it that the flesh flakes. If it does not flake, that means that it hasn't been cooked all the way. So we're going to do the flake test now. Flaking good to me. Let that cool down and oh and I I keep I'm a busybody. One thing at a time. So we have the broccoli cooked. Thanks for watching today and always taste that yum.